Hey everyone, this is Stevie here, and today I'm going to be showing you how to do something kind of practical. Now, this little handle here came off of a shovel my mom was using and she broke it. Like you can see the, the crack right here, I put it together just so that we could uh, diagram it. But what we want to do is design this in Fusion 360 and be able to print it on our Mantis 3D printer. It makes it super easy to be able to do, and it should only take us about 10 minutes to do the full thing. Now, obviously it could be quicker, but I'm going to be slowing down so that I can show you every step. So, to me this base here looks like, just like one of our last videos, we have to draw two circles and a rectangle, and then we're going to be um, filleting it so that it has these nice curves. So let's start with that. So first that rectangle is going to be 38 by 20.5. So we'll hit create, click here, and then we'll do our two point rectangle and type in um, 38 by 20.5 so that 38 is width. So we'll do the 20.5 first. So 20.5 tab 38 and hit enter. Next, we're going to zoom in a bit, and we're going to put in our two circles. One of radius 20.5 millimeters, and one of 31 millimeters. So we'll find our center of our rectangle here, by going here, and there. So we need to put 20.5, and hit enter. And then we will put in 38, it looks like. 31, my bad. 31 and press enter. Now we're going to cut some stuff away because to fill it, you remember, we need to have intersecting lines that terminate there. So if we don't, then we won't be able to actually fill it. So let's go to the trim button here and let's start deleting all these unnecessary parts. And there we go. Now we have terminating points of intersection. We can go up to our fillet tool, and I didn't really have a way to measure the radius of this, but I'm just going to say that it's about 8, eight millimeters, and press enter, and we're going to do that for each of them. So we'll go here and press 8, and then we'll go here and do 8, and then we'll actually experiment a little bit with the corners here to see what looks nice. So let's start off with like four. Actually that's pretty much as close as we're gonna get it so we'll do four for each of these. And just two more. Four and four. And press enter. So now what we can do is extrude this. I didn't write the dimension for that on here but I just measured it and it's four millimeters. So we will press our Q and select this and type in 4 and press enter. Now when we orbit you can see that we have a nice base and that looks kinda like this one. Next what we're going to do is we have to put in these little bars here because those are what actually holds the shovel head in it. So I measured it's about 7 millimeters from the bottom here so we'll put in a construction line and then just draw a rectangle that goes all the way across because it's not super necessary that there's a hole in there because um, nothing goes there. So we'll just draw a rectangle that goes the whole way across. So what we will do is minimize this and then we'll go up here and we'll create a sketch. We'll click on this face here because those um, those bars start after this face and we will click on construction and then select a line when you go over here we're gonna select this bottom middle point here and then we're just gonna go up by seven millimeters now we're going to deselect construction and select a two-point rectangle we want to start somewhere in here because what's going to happen is if we start here and you draw your rectangle you'll see that it's missing a little piece right there and that there's a gap there. So what we want to do instead is start somewhere inside here as long as it starts on that point. So now you can see there won't be any little gap that's missing. So we'll make that and then when you press Q 
you'll actually see that it automatically only highlights the part that's inside, which is nice. So we'll select that, and I didn't measure how long it was, so I'm just going to write that it's 15 millimeters and press OK. We're going to orbit down and look at that, and it looks good. So, next thing we're going to do is actually make that little lip right here that's about 2 millimeters tall. Now, we know that the radius of this, or the diameter of this, is 25 millimeters, so we'll just make that like 26 and a half, just to be a little bit bigger. So we'll create a sketch on this same face again, and we will select our center diameter circle. We'll go to the middle point here, and then we'll type in 26.5 and press enter. We'll press Q and then click on it and just extrude it by 2 millimeters and press OK. Now, finally, we can start working on the handle bit, which is 120 millimeters tall, but that's from the very bottom. We know that we had 4 millimeters here and 2 millimeters here, so that's 6 millimeters. So we can write 120 minus 6. So first we need to actually draw the circle though. So we'll create a sketch on this circle here and draw our center diameter circle of a, of a diameter of 25 millimeters and press enter. We can press Q and click on that circle we just drew. And now we're going to type in 120 minus 6. And then we'll press enter once more. So now we have a nice handle but the problem being is that it's it's hollow at the top so we need to fill that in so we'll go to create another sketch and we will select this top plane here we'll zoom in a little bit and we'll choose another center diameter circle we'll choose the midpoint here and just drag it until it touches the this circle here and once we've selected that you can press Q we'll select our circle that we just drew and we'll actually be dragging it down We'll drag it into there, and even though it's saying negative, it's going to be adding material because there's nothing for it to cut away from. So, since it's at, we want to go down 20 millimeters, we'll actually go down 25, just in case. Well, actually, we'll do, we'll do 20. 20 is fine. And press Enter. So now we want to, we want to round it off because we want it to have a nice round top like that. And the way we do that is. We take the radius of this and we use that to fill it. So a fillet is in a radius, so we can't just use the diameter. So we'll select this, and we'll select a radius of 25 divided by 2. And then we will press Enter. Now we want to make that little cutout here. And to me it looks like a 14 by 14 box that we can then just put a 3 point arc in and um, cut it out so then it looks like that so we'll go here and the way we can draw on a cylinder is by going to this construct tab here and click on tangent plane now this tangent plane will allow us to select this cylinder and actually draw with respect to it and see it's offset we can choose how far we want to offset it but we just want it flush with it because when we cut through we want it to be able to cut straight through there so we'll press OK now we can actually create a sketch on that plane, which makes it nice and convenient because if you notice the sketch button only allows you to work with planar surfaces or flat surfaces. So we, to be able to use this on a cylinder, we needed to create that offset plane. So what we will do next is take a two point rectangle. And unfortunately you can't really be super scientific about this just because we're not actually drawing with the cylinder here we're drawing on a plane in front of it so I'm just gonna kind of eyeball it and place the first corner there it needs to be 14 yeah I think I need to move it over a little bit more so I'll move it one more and then that's 14 by 14 and now we are going to go up here to our create and choose a three-point arc I'm just gonna select the midpoint on each side and then just bring our arc up to the top there and touch. And now we can just trim off those extra sides that we don't need. And finally, we can press Q. We'll select this right here and then we'll actually just cut it straight through both sides and press enter. 
and now you can see it didn't make it hollow in there because we extruded it far enough and we've got the cutout for our handle and that's about it I'm not going to go into drawing like the little design on it just because right now I just want to make a functional print that we can use and the best part about this is that only took about 10 minutes for us to actually design this entire thing and now we can have our 3D printer print it in a matter of like an hour or two. We don't have to leave our house, we don't have to really do any work, and it costs a lot less than actually buying a new shovel. So there you have it guys. This is just a cool practical print for you and I thought I'd like to share, you, share with you how you can actually take something that you have in your life and design it on Fusion 360 and be able to print it on your Mantis 3D printer. All it took was a ruler and the part that I had and some eyeballing so it won't be absolutely perfect but it's pretty darn close and it's fun to do. Plus if you have your friends over and they see the shovel or something you know you've got a story to tell. So thank you for watching please like and subscribe and comment down below what you'd like to see me do next and we'll see you in the next video.